Okay, 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 okay. A coat is a patterned jacket that coordinates with a trother made from the same fabric or they have the same pattern. Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen from review watching from welcome back to Top Stitch Tailoring Studio. In today's video, as per this request, I'm going to share with you the easy way on how to draft this beautiful coat or a jacket chest size 42 inches using step-by-step -step method that I will be showing you. Just watch this video up to the end. That's my request to you. Okay, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let us jump straight to our coat or jacket practical pattern drafting class. Okay. I draw a vertical straight line on one side of my pattern paper, which will be the center back guideline. One horizontal line on top of my pattern paper, which will be the neck and shoulder guideline. Then I label this point A, which is the starting point for most of my calculated body measurements. Okay. Then, first is to determine coat full length. From starting point A, I measure downwards coat full length, which is 30 inches plus 0 0.5 inch length is giving me 30.5 inches. So I mark 30.5 inches here. Then I square across a straight line. Also from coat hemline, I mark downwards 1.5 inch for hem allowance. Then I square across a hem allowance straight line like this. Next is to determine underarm line or chest line. From starting point A, I measure downwards chest 42 inches divided by 4 giving me 10.5 inches. So I mark 10.5 inches here. After I square across a straight line. Next is to determine shoulder drop line. From starting point A, I measure downwards chest 42 inches divided by 24 giving me 1.75 inches. So I mark 1.75 inches here. Also I square across a straight line. Next is to determine across back height line. So from this chest line, I measure upwards chest 42 inches divided by 24, giving me 1.75 inches. So I mark 1.75 inches here. Also, I square across a straight line. Also, I determine belly or tummy, or you can say stomach position. I measure from starting point A to hip line, which is also the hemline, divided by 2 to get the midpoint. Then, at this midpoint, I mark downwards 2.5 inches for the position of the belly after I square across a straight line. Ladies and gentlemen, the seven horizontal lines that are needed for the court drafting project are ready. Now I proceed to shape the back. As you know, our bodies are never straight. So to get that curvy movement at the back, I need to shape my center back line as follows. At across height line, I mark inwards 0 0.25 inches. At the chest line, I mark inwards 0 0.5 inches. Belly line, I mark inwards 1 inch. Then hemline I mark inwards one inch. After I connect these points together to create that curvy appearance at the center back. Mm -hmm. 
after I go ahead and insert this calculated body measurement to these horizontal lines accordingly. I begin by inserting the neck. From starting point A, I measure inwards chest 42 inches divided by 12, giving me 3.5 inches. So I mark 3.5 inches here for the back neck with this. Then at this 3.5 inch point, I mark upwards 0 0.75 inch for the back neck height or depth. Next is to input shoulder measurements to the shoulder drop line. From center back line, I measure inwards shoulder to shoulder measurements divided by 2. My shoulder to shoulder measurements is 20 inches divided by 2 giving me 10 inches. Here is 10 inches plus 0 0.5 inch for seam allowance giving me 10.5 inches. After I connect this point to this point with this faint line, try to carve out this line slightly like this. I'm done with the shoulder area. Next is to work on across back with this. From this shaped point, I measure inwards chest 42 inches divided by 4, giving me 10.5 inches. I minus 1 inch, I remain with 9.5 inches. So, I mark 9.5 inches here after I connect this point to the shoulder drop point in this way to create back arm line rise. Also, at this point, I mark outwards 0 0.5 inches for seam allowance. Okay, next is to work on the tummy stroke belly line and the hemline. At belly line, from this point, I measure inwards belly 38 inches divided by 6, giving me 6.3 inches. So, here is 6.3 inches plus 0 0.5 inch for seam allowance. Also, what I have here, which is 6.3 inches plus 0 0.5 inches, I transfer it to the hemline. Then I add 0 0.75 inches. After I connect these points together to create the back side seam line. Try to blend in this sharp point. Next is to insert side vents to this cord pattern. The placement of the vent stroke the slit is determined by the style you are creating. If you want your vent to be at the center back, you make sure that you mark it this side. But as for me in this tutorial, I want my vent to be on this side, so I mark it this side. From the hemline, I mark upwards 9 inches for the vent opening or height. At this point, I mark outwards 2 inches vent with this after I square up vent lines like this. Also, mark upwards 1 inch for vent seam allowance. Then, the last thing is to curve my back neckline like this. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the back drafting. Next is to use this back pattern as a guide for drafting a front and a side panel. I lay and 
pin my back pattern like this. After I go ahead and trace out the horizontal working lines, Then I unpin the back pattern and put it aside. I continue highlighting these traced lines. Since we are working on the front part, I will have to determine across front height line. So, from this chest line, I measure upwards chest 42 divided by 16, giving me 2.625 inches. I mark 2.625 inches here, then I square across a mini straight line like this. Also, I draw one vertical straight line, which will be the center front button placement guide. Then, I bring back the back pattern. I mark 0 0.5 inches seam allowance at the center back line. After I trim off the excess from the back pattern. Okay, 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 okay. We continue working on the front. I now insert calculated body measurements to these lines accordingly. I begin with the front neck. From this front button guideline, I mark inwards chest measurement 42 divided by 8, giving me 5.25 inches. So, I mark 5.25 inches here. Then, at this 5.25 inches, I mark slightly 0 0.25 inches upwards. Next is to work on the front shoulder. I bring the back pattern draft. I align it at this 0 0.25 inch point to to the shoulder drop line then i trace out the back shoulders like this after i connect this point to this point with a slant line then i go ahead and give it a slight curve in this way okay we are done with the shoulder area next is to shape my front neck at this point, I mark downwards chest 42 inches divided by 24, giving me 1.75 inches for the front neck depth at the shoulder area. At this 1.75 inch point, I mark inwards 0 0.25 inch. Then at this point, I draw a shaping line like this. Also, I come to this point. I measure downwards chest 42 inches divided by 12, giving me 3.5 inches. So, I mark 3.5 inches here for front neck opening. Then, I connect this front neck depth to this neck opening point in a slant way like this. 
Next is to insert chest measurement to the chest line. From the center button line, I measure inwards chest 42 divided by 4, giving me 10.5 inches. I square these 10.5 inches to the belly line, also to the hemline. Then I join this point from the hemline to the belly line. Next is to determine across front arm hold rise. I come to this 10.5 inch point, I mark inwards chest 42 inches divided by 48 giving me 0 0.875 inches so i mark 0 0.875 inches here after i square up a mini straight line also at this across front rise point I measure outwards chest measurement 42 divided by 24, giving me 1.75 inches. So I mark 1.75 inches here. Then I connect these points to this belly point to create a complete front panel side seam line. Next is to work on the front arm hole rise. I connect this slant point to this intersection point at the across front height line. Then, using my free hand, I create slightly a curved line like this. Also, I connect this intersection point to the side seam point to create front armhole curve. Ladies and gentlemen, we are done with the armhole area. Next is to insert the chest pocket. I come at this point. I mark inwards 2 inches for the distance between chest pocket and arm line rise or across front rise. Then at this 2 inch point, I mark upwards 0 0.5 inch for the pocket slant. Still, at this 0 0.5 inch point, I mark pocket with this. 4.5 inches like this also at this 4.5 inch point i mark upwards pocket height one inch at this 0 0.5 inch point i mark upwards pocket height one inch after i connect these points in this way to create the pocket shape We are done with the chest pocket placement. Next is to work on the lapel, button and the hip pocket guides. I come to the hemline. I mark downwards 0 0.5 inches for the front shape. Then from this 0 0.5 inch point, I measure upwards coat full length, which is 30 plus 0 0.5 length is divide by 3 giving me 10.16 inches so i mark 10.16 inches here and this point will be the position of the first button as well as a guide for hip pocket placement we are still continuing then from this first button point, I mark upwards 4 inches for the distance to the second button position. Also from this second button point, I mark upwards 0 0.5 inches for lapel bottom break point. At this 0 0.5 inch lapel bottom break point, I mark outwards 0 0.75 inches for button allowances.
Then I come to this point, I mark outwards 0 0.75 inches for lapel upper brake line guide. After I connect this upper lapel brake line guide to this lapel bottom brake point with a straight line. Also at the hemline, I mark 0 0.75 inches, then I square up a straight line to create button allowance seam line. Next is to determine the lapel width. At this point of lapel brake line, you can mark outwards lapel widths of your choice. That is, you can mark more or less depending on how big or small you want your lapel to be. But as for me in this video, I want my lapel to be 2.5 inches. So I mark 2.5 inches here. Now, at this point, I connect to the lapel bottom break point here. Here, the way you connect your lapel to the bottom brake point is determined by the style that you are working on. You can as well as create different kind of lapel designs like this one, this one, or this one. The choice is yours and the sky is the limit. As for me, in this tutorial, I'm creating this lapel design. So, if you want a notched collar jacket, you stop at this level. But if you want to add more design elements to this jacket, for example, creating a peak collar jacket, I come to this point. I prolong this line. Then at this point, I mark upwards 1.5 inches. Also, from this point, I mark backwards to the front neckline 1.5 inches. After, I connect these two points to create the lapel peak. Ladies and gentlemen, we are still continuing step by step. I don't want to be too fast or too slow. Instead, I want us to be at the same pace so that me and you arrive at the same destination at the end of this jacket practical class okay we are done with the lapel area next is to insert chest dart to our front i measure the width of my pocket i divide by two to get the midpoint then at this midpoint I square down a straight line to create that line guide. Still, from this midpoint, I mark downwards 2 inches for the chest dart point. Then, I come to the belly stroke tummy line. I insert that intake of 1 inch. So, this side I mark 0 0.5 inches. Also, this side I mark 0 0.5 inches. Then at this hip pocket guideline, I mark 0 0.5 inches, also this side 0 0.5 inches here. After I connect these points together to create coat that legs. Then I come to this point at hip pocket guideline. I mark upwards 0 0.5 inches for the dart cut line on the sides. Then I join this dart cut line to this dart leg like this. Note, when we cut this line open and stitch these darts together, there will be 
fabric shortage on the upper part of the cut line okay to prevent this fabric shortage mess i come to this 0 0.5 inch point i mark upwards 5 inches still at this 0 0.5 inch point i mark outwards 0 0.5 inches then i connect these points together to create my new front side seam line after the next step is to mark out the position of the hip pocket i come to this hip pocket guideline at this dart leg i mark outwards 0 0.5 inches at this 0 0.5 inch point i mark downwards 2.5 inches pocket flap height then i square across this flap height line I curve this corner like this to create a designer flap curve. Next is to insert his allowances to this pattern. Remember, we are dealing with exact body measurements without his allowances. So, there is need to add his or loose allowances to this pattern. But you can add less for tight fit or more for loose fit as for me in this video i'm adding six inches for medium fit now from this center button line at hemline i mark inwards a half of his allowance which is six i divide by two giving me three inches at the belly line i mark inward three inches at the chest line three inches I'm done with the loose and is allowance placement. Next is to work on the side panel. Ladies and gentlemen, I just realized that my camera had stopped recording, but nevertheless, let me explain to you how I got this side panel seam line. I brought the back pattern draft. I came to the hemline I measured from the center back to this point, excluding seam allowances like this. Here I have 7.75 inches. Then I came to this 3 inch loose allowance point. I minus 7.75 inches of the back. Then I measured continuous inwards hip 44 inches divided by 2 giving me 22 inches so here is 22 inches then i added 1.5 inches for seam allowances to get this point after i measured this distance from the center front button line to this point here i had i have 19 inches so I squared this 19 inches up to the chest line and marked it here. Then I connected this point at the chest line to the hemline with a faint straight line. Also, I went ahead and shaped my belly strokotami. From this faint line, I measured inwards hip measurement 44 minus 38 inches for the belly measurements giving me 6 inches i divided this 6 inches by 4 giving me 1.5 inches so i marked 1.5 inches here then i connected this point to this belly point all the way to the hem allowance line to create this shaped side panel seam line okay that is it mr andrew i hope we are together you sent me a message telling me you have a challenge with the side so this part this part is yours so i let us move together even there is another one who is like andrew so let us move together so that uh, we come at the same level okay now we continue the camera is on next is to work on the side panel chest line and armhole I bring the back pattern draft, 
I measure from the center back to this point excluding seam allowance like this. Here I have 8.6 inches. Then I come to this 3 inch loose allowance point. I minus 8.6 inches of the back. I measure continuous inwards chest 38 inches divided by 2 giving me 21. So here is my 21 inches plus 1.5 inch for seam allowances. Then I measure this distance from this point to this point. Here I have 5.125 inches. Then I shift it to this side at this point. I remark my copped 5.125 inches here. Still at this point, I mark downwards 0 0.5 inches for armline shaping. After I connect this point to this point all the way to hem allowance line to create side panel front seam line in this way. Next is to work on the side panel armhole curve. I come to this across back height line. If you still remember, I mark inwards 0 0.75 inches. Also, I come to this point. I measure this distance to get midpoint A. Also, at this midpoint A, I measure to this point to get midpoint B. Now, at midpoint A, I mark downwards 0 0.5 inches after I connect these points in a curvy way to create side panel armhole curve. Next is to insert the side vent to the side panel. From the hemline, I mark upwards 9 inches for vent opening or height. At this point, I mark outwards 2 inches vent width. After, I square up vent lines like this. Also, I mark upwards 1 inch for vent seam allowance. We are done with the vent area. Next is to shape our coat pattern from the front bottom. I come to this 0 0.5 inch point that we moved earlier. I shift the front hemline like this. Also, I shift the hem allowance line of 1.5 inches. At this point of newly created hemline, I mark diagonally 1.5 inches here. Then, using a curved ruler or you can use a free hand, I create a coat bottom shape in this way. Also, from the center button line, I mark inwards 4.5 inches for hem allowance shaping. Wow! Look, our coat pattern is already showing shape. Next thing is to insert and mark hip pocket with it. From this point, I mark inwards pocket width 6.75 inches here. Here is 6.75 inches plus 1 inch for this dart allowance plus 1 inch for these seam allowances. Now, when I remeasure this, it gives me 8.75 inches. 
then I square down like this. After I create side panel pocket flap design like so. Okay, 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 okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of our code drafting class. If you have learned something new in this tutorial, please leave a comment in the comment section down below. I would wish to read those comments and give you back the replies. Okay, that is it. The last thing is to trim off and separate the front panel from the side panel. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, these are our patterns. We have come to the end. Thank you so much for watching all the way from where we began from. Mr. Bill, all the way from Australia, please. Thank you so much for being patient. I know uh, you gave me this request some time back, but as I told you in our conversation that uh, I have limited the time for pattern drafting videos. So I just do once in a while, but uh, I record them. Then after I move, whenever I get time, I do the editing. So uh, finally, your video is done. You can use this type of uh, uh, drafting to design any kind of a uh, coat uh, blazer that you want so long as you know the basics good enough you told me that uh, you already you're already in the industry for quite some good time but uh, you didn't know some of the i mean you didn't know this method actually it is unique to you i am on i'm actually i'm very happy and i'm happy that he i'm doing something that is being loved by you people thank you so much for supporting me and really people you are giving me more energy and morale to create more videos i don't know <laughs> hey yeah. okay guys uh that's what i had for you today thank you so much thank you thank you thank you I say, okay, guys, if you've seen this video actually has been helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up, share, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss on anything that I upload on this channel. This channel is strictly for pattern drafting. If you are already established designer, please, this channel is for you. If you are new in the fashion industry, this channel is yours. And if you wish to become a fashion designer, please, still, this channel is for you. It is ours. So just embrace this channel, support this channel, share the videos, like them, subscribe, comment. That's the support that you will give to this channel. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me go and rest. I sign out. See you in my next video. Bye-bye. Shalom. I sign out.